Hey there, creepy peeps. Welcome to my channel if you are new here and welcome back if you're returning. It's time for another Come With Me review, but as all the theaters are still closed down, I'm not going anywhere. Shudder has been absolutely blessing us with new horror movies during this time. So, you know, at least we got something, even if we can't go to the movie theater. I know a lot of us are missing the theater experience. I am, most definitely. I'm so sorry for ever complaining about anybody using their phone or sitting right next to me or like talking. I will never complain about those things again. I swear, I just wanna go back to the movie theater. <laughs> Anyways though, today I'm gonna to be talking about Host. Before I get too far into this though and start the movie, I wanna say thank you to my creepy patron peeps for supporting my channel. Thank you guys so, so much. If you wanna find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep, you can follow that link in the description. So Host is directed by Rob Savage and it follows six friends who hire a medium to hold a seance over Zoom during lockdown, but get far more than they bargained for as things quickly go wrong. And according to my information here on the wonderful internet, Host was actually shot remotely during lockdown, which is pretty cool. I like, I feel like we were all anticipating it. It was just a matter of time <laughs> before we actually started getting movies that take place like while people are staying at home in quarantine or in lockdown, whatever you want to call it. The fact that I'm going to be watching one that's a Zoom call, no less. Um, I'm here for it. I'm already excited. The movie is completely filmed by the actors in their own homes and the director, like I said, this Rob Savage, apparently never set foot in the same room as his actors at any point during production and instead directed them remotely. As this is meant to take place over a Zoom call on people's computers, I thought it would be apropos if I watched it on Old Faithful here just to get the ambiance, you know? I'm gonna start host and then in like a split second for you guys, I'll be back to tell you what I thought about it. Okay, so first and foremost, before we get into what I thought about it, if you wanna watch this movie, like if you're interested in watching this movie at all, just go ahead, like, probably don't listen to my review. This It's kind of a short movie. Technically, I think it's still a feature film. It's like 56 minutes long, but it doesn't take up that much of your time. Go watch it in like a dark room on your laptop. This will be perfect. Just immerse yourself. Because it's so short though, I might like venture a little bit into spoiler territory. So that's just a forewarning. Um, I don't think I should have to go into like actual detail, but it will be slightly spoilery. I think this was quite good. I think for what it was, the fact that this was all filmed and directed remotely. So like everything that was happening, I'm sure they, I don't know. I like, I don't know. I would love to see like a behind the scenes on this. Uh, <laughs> if people like came to the actors like houses or wherever they were to like do some of the effects and things like that. Um, I'm sure they did, but like to be able to do that like remotely is really cool. I think it's really creative and yeah, um, really immersive. It's, I feel like because we had unfriended before, we've already kind of figured out that we could watch something that's technically, technically supposed to be a computer screen the whole time and not get bored, which was the case here. I feel like they did a really good job with keeping it realistic like it was obviously filmed on laptops and or maybe possibly cell phones not that the quality was bad but it wasn't like you know it wasn't like movie perfect there were some glitches sometimes the audio didn't line up so it's, a, it's like it's very messy and like realistically messy so it just adds to the immersion of like when you're watching this you feel like you're on an actual zoom call it's not perfect you can tell there were bits of dialogue that were most likely improvised and it works really well it just seems really realistic it's not too polished which would take away from the experience because it's meant to be realistic which is the whole point of like found footage anyway which i guess this technically falls under i love a good haunted house story haunted house stories and home invasions really scare me anything that messes with the idea that you're not safe in your own home i really have a problem with <laughs> 
I just feel like your home is supposed to be where you feel safe. So anything that messes with that, no. I think the effects that they use are really, really good. There's a lot of stuff that's done practically. I think maybe I only really noticed like one like CGI thing and it's so brief that I'm not even really sure it was CGI. It could have not been, but it was so brief that you wouldn't even notice anyway. And it's like the like a crappy like phone slash laptop quality. Not that crappy, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not crystal clear. It's not a crystal clear picture. So it's passable. And they made good use of some stuff that you is really recognizable. I don't want to spoil too much, but like face filters. I, I All I'll say is remember when there used to be like some of those like scary videos going around where somebody's using like a Snapchat filter and then the camera like picks up, like the filter picks up on something like over somebody's shoulder, like there's a face there, but there's nobody there. They make really good use of stuff like that, which <laughs> makes me feel like whoever made this movie was probably somebody around my age. I will say there's not any character development, um, which isn't all that surprising. It's only a 56 minute runtime. It's meant to be taking place just on this laptop. So it's just this Zoom uh, meeting, this Zoom call, and that's it. So there really isn't any character development. I feel like the the plot they make, a, they make good use of stuff that they, I'm trying to say it without spoiling it. Um, they make good use of stuff that they mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> like it's something that happens that you won't think, like you think it's just a misdirection and you don't think it's gonna come up again, but it ends up pretty much being the reason that everything is happening. That was so vague and awfully said. Um, so I hope maybe if you've seen it, you understand what I mean. Um, if not, talk to me in the, in the comments and I'll clarify <laughs> with a spoiler warning, of course. I don't know, I just feel like the, the plot was really well thought out up until the very, very end, which I will say, for the runtime, I'm surprised like they made it 98% of the way before we got to the moment where you're asking why are we still filming? <laughs> like why are we still filming? Um, and that's because people of course throughout the movie walk with their cameras like their phone or their laptop while they're on the, the call. So there's just like, like I said, it's like the last minute of film where a character is walking with, I think it's supposed to be the lap, a laptop. Um, and I kind of don't really understand why <laughs> other than to have the final shot of the movie. Um, but like I said, that's literally like the last minute of film out of 56 minutes. So not terrible. I think, I, I don't know. I really enjoyed this. I think it's a really creative scary fun movie to come out of lockdown <laughs> so like I said I'm gonna reiterate again um if you want to watch this movie it's not even recommended at this point I feel like it's just required allow yourself to be immersed turn off all the lights wait till it's nighttime or something turn off all the lights watch it on your laptop with headphones on and just like just pretend you're in the zoom call and I feel like you're just gonna have such a fun time <laughs> in terms of rating I think for what they did here, I got to give it four out of five. I think it's it was really clever, really fun. Um, it's not the most perfect thing, but I don't know. You just got to give credit where credit is due. So on IMDb, it has a 6.4 out of 10. I don't see a Rotten Tomato score popping up. If I find one while I'm editing this, I will put it on the screen. And on Letterboxd, it has a 3.6 out of 5. Um, it looks like maybe a good number. Yeah, ooh, wow, a good number of you have seen this. Um, and it looks like from it, it's a little all over the place. Lots of two and a half, threes, fours, even some some five stars. Jimmy Champagne gave it five stars. Uh, why did I feel like Taylor gave it five stars? I feel like I have to. <laughs> 
call somebody else out who gave it five. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like calling Jimmy out for that. Um, no, I'm not calling anybody out for that. I thought it was great also. Okay, so if you've seen Host already, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Um, and it's only 56 minutes, so realistically, like right now, you could go watch it and then just come back and tell me what you thought also. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're new here or if you've been lurking, become a creepy peep today. I post two new videos a week um, where I talk to your faces and hopefully you enjoy me talking to your faces. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Until then, stay strange. Bye.